You might stop taking your fish oil after watching this. It really puts it in a different perspective. I want you to imagine something for just a second. If you left just fish out on the counter, how long would it take before it started to smell rotten? A couple hours, realistically, probably at least a day, maybe two days, three days, but it would start to smell pretty bad, right? This is going to be the foundation of how I explain the problem with fish oil. But as always, I have solutions. I have practical, pragmatic ways that you can get around this. A lot of it comes with understanding how to shop for fish oil, which I will teach you as well. After today's video, I did put a link down below for 25% off of Seeds Daily Symbiotic. So if you're focused on a lot of different things in your life, like changing your diet, potentially modulating inflammation, all those kinds of things, your gut microbiome is where it starts. So a lot of people jump to taking this supplement and that supplement and this for longevity and that, when in reality, a lot of it just starts with what we eat and our gut. So that link down below is for 25% off of the symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic. I do not recommend any probiotics at all other than this one because this company actually puts their best foot forward with research and with the right researched probiotic strains, not just the ones that have the cheapest options from the co-packer. This is legit stuff. So the technology is also very interesting with a capsule inside of a capsule. So you get sort of this multi-stage delivery. I think you'll notice it within a few days. I noticed it literally within two days when I started taking it. So anyhow, that link down below for 25% off your daily symbiotic from Seed. Highly recommend you try it out. Okay, so you left the fish on the counter. It's starting to stink. Well, do you know why it's stinking? It's because it's going rancid, right? Now, before you think, okay, I know what Thomas is talking about. He's talking about rancid fish oil. And yes, I am, but there's a couple other things we need to understand here because there are a lot of weird things that go into fish oil these days, okay? But what we have to know is that fish oil is a polyunsaturated fat, okay? Polyunsaturated fats are great because they are tremendous for helping our cell membranes. They're so fluid, they can actually make our cell membranes more fluid so they receive signals better and all this stuff but they're fragile. They're little babies that need to be handled with care. Okay, here's the thing. A polyunsaturated fat, like in fish or even in nuts, has a lot of unsaturated bonds. Okay, unsaturated, so that means they are not saturated, right? A saturated fat has multiple hydrogen bonds, which is why it's saturated and solid. A monounsaturated fat has mono one a seat open, unsaturated bond. A polyunsaturated has multiple unsaturated bonds, which makes it great, but it also means that there are more seats at the table for a bad guy to come sit in and oxidize it. That's why saturated fats like butter and like ghee can be left out on the counter at room temperature and they don't want to oxidize because all the bonds are saturated. An olive oil is usually okay on the counter for a while but a polyunsaturated fat oxidizes very fast. And most of the time, fish oil is not kept in the fridge. It should be. It's not stored in the fridge at the store. It should be. And it's not put in the refrigerator immediately after catching the fish and squeezing the oil out of it, which it should be, in my opinion. So a lot of times you're left with a pretty unstable oxidized fat. Now, if you talk to a lot of people out there People like Paul Saladino and things like that, whether you trust them or not, they have points when they say that things like nuts and things like polyunsaturated fats could be problematic. They're not problematic in the sense like how they talk about them a lot, in my opinion. They're problematic because they are fragile. They are amazing if you can get them fresh, right? It's exactly why when I eat nuts, I eat macadamia nuts because they are a low polyunsaturated fat content and a high monounsaturated fat content compared to other nuts. Much more stable nut. It's why I sprout nuts more, so that there's less phytates and so that I can get more out of it. It's exactly why roasted nuts can sometimes be worse, because sometimes you oxidize it. But anyway, let's not go there. Fish oil, the biggest problem that we face is that most fish oil is bound to an ethyl ester. That is a synthetic compound. I would bet my pretty much bottom dollar that if you were to go to Walmart or your grocery store and grab a fish oil doing yourself something good, it would probably be oxidized and it would probably be bound to an ethyl ester. 
A lot of times, unfortunately, you can't even find that on the label if it's an ethyl ester form. There's a study published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It took 150 people and it had them consume either an ethyl ester form fish oil or a triglyceride form fish oil, which I'll explain in a minute. There was 186% absorption with the triglyceride form and only 161% increase in the overall ethyl ester form. That still sounds like not a huge difference, but that actually is a very big difference. But that's just absorption. The reason it absorbs better in a triglyceride form is because that is the bioavailable form that we would get DHA in the body. Okay, not in a chemically bound form. Then there was a study published in the journal, the American Oil Chemist Society. This one was very interesting because it found that when fish oil was in an ethyl ester form, it oxidized faster and more at all temperature ranges over triglyceride form. So this means a standard fish oil, even at a relatively low temperature, is going to have a higher oxidation rate than a triglycerol form. The triglycerol form, once again, is exactly what it would get out of the fish. They bind it to a glycerol. Okay, so a glycerol molecule is the fatty acid backbone. So fats form onto a glycerol to form a triglyceride. It's how you can stabilize a fat. So what they do in a triglycerol form is they take the free fatty acids, the EPA, eicosapentaenoic, or the DHA, docosahexaenoic, and they bind it to glycerol and they make it into triglyceride form so it's stable. That way when you ingest it, all that happens is the glycerol molecule cleaves off and you're left with the fatty acids to be used as whatever thing they're gonna do. The other thing we have to get around is that too much reduction of inflammation is bad. There's a study published in prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and EFAs that looked at this. And they found that if you take too much fish oil and you already are consuming a high amount of fish, or in this case, polyunsaturated fats or anti-inflammatory foods, it could actually be too much quelling of inflammation. So does this mean throw your fish oil away? No. I'm in the same camp as Rhonda Patrick. I am all about fish oils, and I know some people have negative things to say, but I have always been a fan of even mega-dosing fish oil. But I have three cardinal rules. One, if I am eating a lot of fish and sardines and mackerel, I don't take fish oil. Because too much in an unnatural form doesn't make sense. I want it in its biological, bioavailable form whenever possible. So fish oil is not something I just take the same amount every day, no matter what. If I eat fish, I back off my dose, or I just don't take it. Number two, I only buy triglyceride form. Now, this gets difficult, and this is by no way, shape, or form a plug for this company, okay? I know that Thorn Nutrition, and I know Huberman's behind them a lot, has true triglycerol form, okay? They do have the DHA and the EPA, both in triglycerol form. Okay, there's also a number of other companies that do. And the cool thing is, is they're proud of it and they advertise it. So if you just go on Google and you type best fish oil triglyceride form, you're gonna get covered up with a bunch of good ones. The hard part is you can't always find the ones that are ethyl ester. But the good news is the ones that are triglyceride, they like to tout it. They like to tell you and they rightfully should. So you can usually find those. If it doesn't say something, well, it's probably ethyl ester. The other rule that I have is more often than not, I utilize cod liver oil. And I use cod liver oil because I get vitamin D in it, I get omega-3s, and I get vitamin A, which synergistically work together for a number of different things within the body. I don't just take cod liver oil, but I almost always do take cod liver oil. And it's going to be a little lower omega-3 dose, but at least you're counterbalancing with other things to get it in somewhat of a bioavailable form, almost as if you were eating fish. So it is probably a negative aspect to be taking just any old fish oil. And I know people are gonna ask, what about krill oil? It's a very similar kind of thing. It's still gonna oxidize. The only difference is that it has an antioxidant called astaxanthin in it that protects it a little bit more. I still recommend refrigerating krill oil, refrigerating calamarine oil, which is from calamari, and refrigerating fish oil, no matter what form that you get. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and a big thank you again to Seed for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out afterwards. See you tomorrow.